Hi. I want to talk about competition. I came here to this lake to go run. And I've been thinking about this a lot because I've had to chill out a bit. <laughs> I used to not even think of myself as a competitive person, which is absolutely insane now that I like think about it because I've been competing my entire life, literally, in artistic roller skating. I competed for 20 years, 20. Oh, I guess I didn't start till I was four. And then I stopped, I think, when I was 21 math. But I competed for a very long time. And it taught me so much about myself, about other people, about the world around me. And it's been coming up a lot recently. And that's not a bad thing. It's, it's been coming up in a lot of good ways. Um, just the other day, I was with a group of skaters who are doing the skating TV show that is coming out. And they asked why I didn't do it. And I've gotten this question a lot. A lot of people have been emailing me asking me if I did it. No, I did not. I, the show is called Roller Jam, I believe. Um, no, I did not do it. I, I hate the thought of competing in roller skating these days. I did it for so many years. And it took so much effort and time and energy and competing is just not my favorite thing to do. I tend to compete with myself every single day, all day. And that's why I wanted to film this video right now before I go on my run, because I need to remind myself that it's not a competition. Like, yeah, I do want to improve. I do want to get better. But the reason I burn out so much is I go real hard, real fast, and I need to ease my way into it. And I watched a video today that was about dance, and it was from a choreographer that I really admire, and he was talking about the difference of hurrying through things or taking your time. And as I look around me right now, I'm on this beautiful lake, and there's a family coming to play basketball. There's a man across the lake that is playing with his dog. So if you hear those noises, that's what they are. But the people around me right now are so relaxed and they seem so happy. And that is what I aim to be, honestly. And in skating, I've come to such a great place, finally, um, with my own skating that I am so happy happy and I'm so happy doing what I do and I love competition. I love it. I love sports. I didn't know this about myself, but uh, the past few years I've fallen in love with baseball and hockey and I absolutely love it and I do get obsessed with it and I love it so much because I can see these athletes working so hard and I know what that feels like. And it like literally makes me emotional. It's so bizarre. But I know how much work goes into it. And I really admire that. And I love it. And I love teaching people that compete. I love the whole aspect of it. I just simply don't want to do it. And we're all competing every day. Like on social media, we are competing for more likes. We're competing for more comments. We're competing, competing for more followers. Like we're always competing. And that's natural. And yeah, the thought of competing in roller skating, like even for a TV show, just for me, it's not it. It's, I, ugh, it makes, ugh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to ever compete in roller skating again. And like auditions and things, like that is another form of competition. We do that. Um, but like straight up competition with judges, it's just not for me anymore. Um, but competition taught me so much. And back to the choreographer, the video that I saw today, he was talking about rushing through and versus taking your time and really creating a solid foundation of something. And in skating, I, of course, he was talking about dance, but I was thinking skating in my head, everything he said. 
he talked about how if he gets knocked down now, say he gets knocked down three steps, he knows exactly what he did to get up to that level. And that is how I feel about skating. That's not really how I feel about anything else in life. Like I started running recently and I am in the foundational steps. Thank goodness this time I have learned that I can't just go all in and run like 10 miles the first time I'm running. I needed to start with one mile. Then I could work my way up to two miles. I haven't even worked my way up to three miles yet. I'm not doing a 5K yet. Um, I'm still at two, Uh, but I'm easing my way in. And if I get knocked down, I know the exact steps that I need to take to move forward and even progress further. Um, And that is how I feel about skating. And I think that that is something that is very important and is very overlooked nowadays because everything is so fast um, you want to be good at something, you got to be good at it quick or else give up. Like that's how it feels these days. And I think that is due to social media, but realistically, that's not going to stick. And competing for as many years as I did and then teaching competition for as many years as I did uh, and I'm still doing, I that's really been enforced in my life that you can't skip any steps. You can't rush the process if you want it to be a lasting thing. So I've just been thinking about competition a lot and how much it's taught me about myself, about other people, about everything. And you really do in competition see the best and the worst in everyone and yourself. And it is terrifying. Um, When I was competing, I was not a great version of myself. And that's realistically why I had to stop. I was so burnt out and it was just not healthy for me. I struggled so much with competition anxiety. I, sorry if this is too much information, but I would get very sick before every competition after my first win. So 2007 was fine. I was extremely nervous in 2007 and I really did not think I had any chance of winning and I was very shocked when I did Um, but after 2007 it got really bad I would get sick before I competed and that was like my thing (laughs) it became my thing that they would call my name I needed a trash can nearby because I would get sick and then um, I would go out and perform and it taught me that I could work through it like no matter what even if I was literally throwing up I could step out onto that floor and perform. And it's a good thing to know, but it's also not a great thing to know because I knew how to like mask my emotions so well and I got so good at it um, because I had to, or at least I felt like I had to. Um, 2008, I fell and broke my front tooth at nationals and they were like, we can move you to the end, like we can give you time. And I was like, no, I need to do this right now while I still can, because if I stop for too long, it's I'm gonna be in a lot of pain. And luckily like the adrenaline did work for me, but um, you learn so much about yourself through competition and what you can handle and what you can't handle and what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up with. And in life that has fully just like trickled into it like I I know my limits I know what I can do but looking back now that was such a wild ride to do that and to do it at such a young age like I learned so many things that I didn't even realize I learned I'm only unpacking all of that now in my 30s um but the main thing that I have learned is to go slow take my time and learn along the way. There's no shortcut. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go run my two miles and I'm going to stretch, I already stretched at home, but I'm gonna stretch a little bit more, run my two miles and not be too hard on myself (laughs) because this competition is only with myself and the way I ran two days ago, I didn't even run yesterday because I'm taking my time. All right, wish me luck.